Today we're going to determine if a function is linear or nonlinear. And the best way I can do that is to kind of um, explain to you and put it in big picture. Um, we've just talked in the last unit about whether something is a function or is not a function. So as we did some of our examples, I'm going to put up a couple that were not a function. So we had some graphs that were not a function because remember they did not uh, meet the vertical line test. So they crossed in more than one place. So if they are not a function, we don't have to consider them for linear or nonlinear because they have to be a function to be able to be identified as either linear or nonlinear. And so I'm going to put up some examples. Um, these are considered um, non-examples. They meet the vertical line test. However, they are not in a straight line format. And so what you're going to see when I do that is we have some sort of curve, um, even if it's just one side of a curve. It can be multiple straight lines, but you notice that it does not have a consistent slope going all the way across. There will be a slope for this section and a different slope here and a different slope there. So the slopes would need to be the same all the way across. And so you can see that in my examples for linear um, graphs. All of them would have a straight line. They don't all have to be positive, because I have an example here of a negative one, but you would have a straight line happening. So now let's do the same thing, only let's discuss it with um, tables. So if I were to put up a couple of examples of non-functions, these were non-functions, remember, because we have a 6 with a 3 and a 6 with a 5. We do the same thing here. We have a repeat here at negative 1. Negative 1 goes with 0 and negative 1 goes with 7. So again, this is an example of not a function. So when I'm ready to look at things that are also not a function, now we're going to have to talk about them in terms of slope. And so the only way to do that would be to go ahead and look at specifically what's happening in the pattern. So let me rearrange the page for just a moment. At this point, you should be able to tell a pattern when you see a pattern. Um, if you don't like patterns, then you're welcome to find a slope. Unfortunately, with a large table like this, a pattern is sometimes easier than counting the slope. So you can see that when I do this, um, this has increased by 4, this one has increased by 4, this one has increased by 4, and so on down the row. All of those are 4s. That is not enough to tell me that it is a pattern. I have to have a similar pattern. That's plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, and plus one. And so my slope for this particular one would have been four over one. And if I can find the slope and it is the same all the way down, then that would be an example of a linear. Now I'm going to give a non-example before we talk about why the others are and are not. So let's go over here and look at something similar. This is the same one that we used over here. So we can clearly see that the pattern of plus 1 happens all the way down. And so that's easy. We think we're on the right track at this point um, for it to be linear. So let's then see what happens over here on the opposite side. See this one went up 4 and then... Um, from negative 3 up to 2, that would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. It went up 5. And then 8 take away 2 would be it went up 6. And then this one went up 7. And then this one clearly went up 8. So that is not a pattern because I can't write a slope. That would be 4 over 1, 5 over 1, 6 over 1. And it is not consistent. So therefore, this one is nonlinear. So take a moment and try those others on the table, and I'm going to show you what the, the slope is for each one of them. That works, and which um, where the pattern breaks down where it does not. So you can see here I went ahead and worked them out for you. You can see that this was a plus 6 all the way down, so my slope was 6 over 1. And this one was a takeaway 2 each time, so it was a negative 2 over 1. And so that has a nice pattern to it, and the slope is consistent. Over here, you can see that it went down 3, down 1, up 1. The minute I see something that is not identical, I know immediately it goes in the nonlinear column. And the same thing happens here. The minute I saw two zeros in that column where there was no change, then there Therefore, that's going to be a nonlinear. Now, let me show you how this looks when we're not just looking at graphs and tables. 
So now let's look at some equations. A linear equation has to be written in the form y equals mx plus b. Those are the ones that we've been working on both um, last year and in the previous sections. And so this is the format that I would be looking for. And so this would be written in that format. This one would be too. It's just a little um, more interesting because the zero um, would go with the x, which makes it disappear in our original original problem, but it still has a slope of zero and a y-intercept of nine. And so even though it doesn't look like a traditional y equals mx plus b, all of these can be written in that format. And then when you go over here and you look at the others, you're going to notice some specific things. For instance, I have things that go to the second power. That is not a linear form. Again, I have second power. This one is an x of a power. This is an exponential um, problem. It's going to have a curve. And then this one, maybe it might be a little easier to see if I had written it as more of a fraction. If you have an x in the denominator or the power or you have an x to the power, those are all examples of nonlinear um, equations. And so just by glancing at them, you should be able to have a pretty reasonable idea as to whether it can be written in slope-intercept form or whether it cannot. All right, so let me give you um, one last cheat sheet page to look at so that you could maybe take a screenshot of it and um, keep that to help you remember. So here's what I would take for notes. In my not a function, we don't really have a good example of an equation. Um, in my non-function, these are examples of non-linear. They are functions, but they are not linear. And an example of a linear would be an equation that is written in that format, y equals mx plus b. As I move down, I can see the same thing for um, the graphs. Um, an example of not a function would be things that fail the vertical line test. Nonlinear would be something that passes the vertical line test, but it is still not a straight line, with the exception of a vertical line, which is also considered nonlinear, is my one example. And a linear line should have a consistent slope, and it would be the same straight line. There'd be no curve to it at all. So those are some examples of that, and a horizontal um, slope of zero would work for that. And then lastly, what we talked about were um, tables. And so not a function is when we have a repeated x value. So you can see here that I have a repeat. Um, one is one, and one is also two. Not or Nonlinear would be an example of one where the pattern is inconsistent and I cannot find the actual slope to be the same all the way across. And an example of a linear would be when the pattern is the same and therefore no matter which two order pairs you pick in the um, line, you would get exactly the same slope. So again, this is my notes. If you need to pause the video here and watch that, please do that. Um, you need to make sure that you are ready to tell the difference between if something is a function and then if it is a function, you should be able to determine whether it is nonlinear or linear based on any way that we have given you the situation, whether that is equations, graphs, tables, and we'll be working towards real life problems. So thanks for listening. Have a good day.